Hello, my name is Dorte Rosen. I'm a goldsmith in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And uh, today I'm going to show you the few gems I purchased when my gem merchant was in town um, a couple of days ago, which is always such an exciting time. And I will tell you, I had this brilliant idea to be outside today because it's such a gorgeous, gorgeous day here today. It's October 10th and it is hot actually in the sun, which is incredible for Nova Scotia. But the issue is um, I can't really see. It's so bright that I can't see myself and hopefully I'll be able to make this work for you because gems are really always best looked at in natural light. And that's what I wanted to do, but it's proving to be a little challenging. I've been experimenting the last half hour and we'll see how it goes. So bear with me. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to see how I can turn this around. There you go. I'm in my courtyard and there's my beautiful, you've probably seen these in my, um, these vines in my various uh, stories. Uh, and yeah, so what I have here is when my gem merchant comes to town, the first thing I have to do is look at the gems I already have. So uh, to make sure I don't buy something that's uh, uh, you know, that, that I already have. So I have four main trays of gems and there's all kinds of different ones for all kinds of different needs. And you've probably seen some of these before. Uh, my tenant is walking in and that's not a problem. You guys walk right on in. <laughs> no problem there, trying to be all sneaky. And then, so this is my sapphire tray and honestly, lately, I've been mostly um, working with sapphires, mainly because they're just uh, the most uh, durable of the colored gemstones. And because I make so many rings, uh, it's a good idea to work with uh, durability. So now I'm going to show you, and this is a very scary and dangerous thing I'm doing here. I was gonna try to um, use my tweezers, but I'm still, believe it or not, always just a touch nervous when I do these lives because, you know, there's no room for mistakes. So I'm not going to try to pick up, my pick up these gems with my tweezers, which I normally would. By the way, you might see that these have a tiny little, like a little grippy thing on the inside. These are stone tweezers. But you can see my hand is not the steadiest this morning. Again, from lack of sleep and what have you. These are some of the gems that I purchased, so I wanted to tell you about them. First of all, um, uh, I suppose, you know, why? So these gems over here, let me see if I can get any closer there. I really hope you can see these. I cannot tell at all uh, if these are in focus or not. But these ones here, all three of these, so these are all blue sapphires. As you know, sapphires come in different colors. Uh, we have here uh, two um, cushion cut and one emerald cut. And I'm going to tilt this just a touch. Ooh. Yeah, we're going to be careful. All the rubies are gone. And the reason uh, I purchased these is not so much to put them into one footers, but uh, you can see, by the way, one is a little lighter in color and it's quite a bit heavier. So um, this one is 1.33 carat. I know some of um, my followers, Jane, for example, would be really interested in knowing how much this stone weighs. This is 1.33 carat, and this one is only a little over half a carat. And the reason that, it, that for that difference, even though they're visually not that different, is gosh, can I turn this around? This one's really fat. It's got a really fat belly. Makes it much harder to uh, set because it has the steps. But it kind of gives it a nice uh, the color. I'm going to just leave that that way around. Uh, whereas this one is not that deep, but it is much more saturated. I actually like these paler colors, so uh, you know that's why I buy them. Not because they are slightly less per carat. This one would be, uh, would cost more per carat because it is more saturated. It's also a little lighter. Uh, and then this also is on that lighter side. Again, I buy them because I like them. 
And the reason, particularly, I mean, I started with this one, hope you can see, uh, is because uh, of the uh, band rings that I started making more and more. For example, this one. This was an emerald one uh, that just um, found its permanent home in New Brunswick. Um, but these simple rings like that make really excellent uh, stackers and the gems would overlap if you stack a bunch of them. And that's what I bought these more rectangular shaped gems for. Um, I also created another one, um, which is, oh yeah, it's hard to see. Choose. Um, you've probably seen uh, this quite spectacular ring that I made uh, for my client Jane. Um, and she, uh, yeah, she this is a pear shaped and we'll get into this uh, in just a moment. But these band rings, by the way, the th three little dots were made from her uh, great grandmothers, I want to say, wedding band. So that is uh, taking the family and putting it into this new heirloom piece. But uh, yeah, these, these ring, this ring particularly was actually uh, overlapping, made to overlap with, oh yeah, with a, so with uh, her three loop um, diamond and three loop and Together they would do, I will show you. Uh, together they would then look like this on the hand, but they could also be worn separately. So that's a fun thing. And uh, speaking of which, I will show you. Oh, no, I do not want to end the video. I just want to end the screen share. Ha, okay. So speaking of which, we'll go over here and I really hope you can see this it's just such a beautiful stone oh I love this one this is kind of my this was the priciest investment I can't buy a whole bunch of these obviously uh, so I have to be very disciplined if you read my newsletter I wrote about that this morning in my newsletter but oh my god it's just so hard not to buy a whole whack load of them really hope you can see that uh, yeah, so this one, let me try and figure this out, is mm, yeah, it's over a carat, uh, it's about a carat and a half. And it's quite, quite, quite lovely. And I'll probably do something like that with it. A little, um, um, you know, a band ring where this kind of will stick out. I have a client too that I'm talking about doing a diamond ring like that for her also. This could also though sit in one of those, oh I don't have one here, but it could sit in one of those three loops uh, a little bit sideways that would also be an idea. And then speaking of the three loops, I also had bought this one which I, I really, oh can you see it? Yes, I really appreciate the sparkle and the color on this one. I quite like it. This is one, two, three, four, one, two, four. This is three quarters of a carat, a little over. And again, I, I really like this color. There's a whole thing about which hemisphere you're in and what sapphire is better in, in the light of the northern versus the uh, southern hemisphere. Uh, and this lighter color is really lovely up here where the light is uh, a little bit darker. So that's that one. And then I bought a couple of little rubies. I'm thinking about, these are ca cabochons and they're quite tiny. Uh, I bought these in rubies and in sapphires. I'm thinking about possibly, maybe they might go into my new flow series. I don't know, but I found them quite yummy, delicious, and fun. I didn't put the sapphires up because they look the same, just blue. And if you've been listening to me for a while, you know that ooh, you know that sapphires and rubies are the same mineral. They're both corundum. And then the last gem. I wanted to, sh actually not the last, but these ones, uh, this is a pair of blue-gray spinel. Oh, can I pick it up? I love spinel. They're also really very pretty. They have a wonderful vitreous luster and uh, 
and I really like this color. I've made uh, several one-footers with these gems in them. Uh, with that, uh, yeah, I really love these as well. Of course, that is why I bought them. I'll only buy them when, um, I mean, in, when the gem merchant comes, and maybe I can show you, uh, it, it's, qu it's quite overwhelming. We spend um, d two hours looking at gems, uh, and there's like, I don't even know if it's thousands, hundreds or thousands, but there are just so, so many gems, and it kind of looks like this, but like all day long. Uh, or for two for two hours, so it's it's really quite quite overwhelming to watch to to be there and and have to make a decision about uh, you know which one I'm going to buy, uh, which ones I'm going to buy. That's well, I have to really do a reality check on that. So the last two I'm going to show you are uh, some tanzanites, and tanzanites do not lend themselves very well for uh, rings, but these would make really amazing earrings and I have them still in the little baggie in which they came and I don't know whether or not you'll be able to see this but the color of a tanzanite is just beautiful it's a little bit more purplish than the uh, it tends to have a bit of a like violet c color in it yeah I'm not sure this is taking but and these uh, would make really great earrings I have a client who is from Tanzania and Tanzanites are actually only, they only occur in this 24 square kilometer um, space in, um, in Tanzania. It's a very tiny uh, space. And most other gems, I'm going to try to get you to look at me again, uh, are, uh, you know, occur in a bunch of other places as well. But Tanzanite only in Tanzania, and because he's from Tanzania, we had talked about maybe making some earrings for his wife, so we'll see about that. But so these ones I have here on memo, uh, which is a term that describes when the uh, gem merchant, because we have such a mutual trust relationship, the gem merchant will leave gem, gems with me or send me gems to show to a client because it's one thing to get pictures, and I do this a lot with my clients, uh, long distance clients especially, but seeing the gems in, in person or having me show them directly to the camera in my virtual atelier is, um, is a different level. And so sometimes I have them here and um, the client can come in and look at them and say yes or no. And if they say no, then or not quite these ones, then I'll either get in a different one or we'll just you know move on. So just so you know, that's uh, something that's uh, possible. And yeah, I, I just see, uh, I put out this ring. This is the kind of ring that I make with those more, except this one has a round gem in it, of course. But yeah, this is the idea with I cannot see a single thing. I have no idea where I am. Uh, this is the idea, this is a spinel. But this is the idea to make a very simple shank. This one happens to be round, it, uh, a round um, metal, you know? Of course the ring is round. But uh, these can be stacked really well and they're a really fun way to do family rings and stuff like that. So that's what I'm going to do with those more uh, rectangular shaped sapphires. I hope this was interesting for you. Uh, to, um, for me to share my passion with you like this is really why I do these lives. And uh, yeah, I am very passionate about these rings. And I'm going to put them away. And um, I think I'll get going on my Thanksgiving dinner soon. And I hope that um, you are well. And if you're not well, I hope that you know how to ask for help because it's also World Mental Health Day today. Asking for help is a really important skill. And uh, I wish you all the best. And we'll talk next week. Bye. Yes.